asking you about constitutional recognition. Where is the campaign at now and what do you see as its trajectory? Firstly, recognition, let's deal with that. This is not about recognising the Aboriginal people as if they weren't here. This is about uh, finding a head of power in the Constitution that the Parliament has to take note of when it comes to make laws. There's been a campaign uh, led by the Constitutional uh, Committee. Uh, there's been a series of dialogues uh, with Aboriginal community people around Australia. I think some 12 of those have happened in, in different locations, not in all locations. But a, 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 a representative group of people from those dialogues will go to Uluru in the next couple of weeks. And the summation of all the various um, ideas and aspirations uh, and proposals will be thrashed through, I, I would presume, over a couple of days. Um, and out of that will come uh, a, a, report, a recommendations or reports or uh, uh, documentation of some form uh, that is then meant to go to the uh, two leaders, uh, Bill Shorten and to the Prime Minister, uh, from the uh, Referendum Council. So there's a couple of steps to happen. Uh, I understand that there is a... Um, uh, a, um, a sort of ceremonial component to this because it's being held at Uluru, one of the most significant spiritual places for Indigenous peoples in this country. Um, but that will then signal that the consultation phase on what might be a proposition to go to the Parliament is pretty much over. Then, okay. there's, then there's another process that starts. And can you see consensus building towards one particular model? Or? There's been a diversity of views. People have, there's been the specific constitutional changes that some people have described as symbolic. Uh, nothing in the constitution is symbolic, let me tell you that. They are powers that the parliament uses when it want, wants to make laws or sets out the relationships between the institutions of this nation, the, the parliament, the judiciary and the states and the commonwealth, that sort of stuff. So they're very significant bits of words in a document called the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But people have been discussing a range of topics, a new kind of relationship. I'm not sure what that would mean, but well, a new kind of relationship. Well, I was going to ask you about that because alongside the conversation around uh, recognition, this conversation around treaty has emerged. Uh, on his uh, Q&A uh, before last year's election, Bill Shorten became the first Labor leader since Hawke, actually, to quietly throw his support behind this idea of a negotiated treaty between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australia. Do I think we need to move beyond just constitutional recognition to talking about what a, a post-constitutional recognition settlement with Indigenous people looks like? Yes, I do. Could it look like a treaty? Yes. And since then, we've seen states, uh, Labor governments in, in uh, South Australia and Victoria actually start even to legislate towards the conclusion of, of some sort of a treaty. Uh, where do you see that push as coming from? I think it's a part of this, well, I would hope it's coming from a, a maturity within our nation, within the nation state. Uh, a gradual awareness that the lands were stolen from Aboriginal people. There was never any treaty where, with the Aboriginal people at the start. And that there's been a range of policies that have been devised and perpetrated upon Aboriginal people that we've had reflected back to us through bringing them home reports, the Royal Commission and the deaths in custody, uh, the Social Justice Commission's reports on many different things. So, and, and the High Court judgments themselves in Mabo and WIC, um, which have highlighted that, that this terra nullius concept was really a legal fiction. And of course, the Native Title Act has flown from that. And there's been a sense uh, in the Native Title Act of agreement making. So there's been a culture in the last 20 years of the agreement making processes between native title holders or applicants and various groups, state governments, pastoralists, miners, um, conservation commissions, etc. So that a culture of agreement making, I think, is built up as part of the implementation of the Native Title Act, which has given, I think, the Australian populace and the institutions in Australia some confidence that things like a treaty 
are possibilities. Mm -hmm. and, and the fear that was there previously and perpetrated by some of the Tories uh, that you couldn't do this, I think that's been dispelled. Yeah. yeah so uh, I, I think it's come from a maturity of things and, and the enlightenment from good judgments like the, the Mabo judgment uh, that has reflected back to us that this is a, the foundations of our nation was based on a lie. And you, as one of the authors of the Barunga Statement, uh, one of the original treaty documents in 1988. Five points. First one, the, the government affirms that it is committed to work for a negotiated treaty with Aboriginal people. Yeah. Do you still see this as uh, an important part of a reconciled Australia? Absolutely, absolutely. There has to be a, an agreement uh, around the significant matters uh, as we go forward. And as you mentioned, uh, Bill Shorten, uh, the leader of the Labor Party, has said that we, as in Labor, we're open to the discussion around this. Now, just how that discussion goes forward is, is critical. Uh, you've also mentioned that, you know, Victoria and uh, South Australia have entered into processes uh, that are talking about treaties with the Indigenous peoples of those jurisdictions. That's a really good thing. It's a marvellous thing. And hopefully other jurisdictions, other states, will pick this up and deal with it in a, you know, in, in, in a normal way as you, as you in, enter into agreements with people from these lands. Yeah. Now, you've dedicated most of your life to public service in academia, government. Uh, you're the director of two land councils and a recipient of the Sydney Peace Prize. Yet in April 2016, you're in a uh, press conference with the opposition leader at Parliament House. It is now time for me to step up to the plate and have a go at trying to influence those same conversations, debates and public policies from the inside as a member of the Senate and representing Western Australia. Yeah, good on you. Tell us about your decision to enter Parliament. Well, I thought for many, many years, and I've, as you've mentioned, worked from the outside, as it were, trying to influence the parliamentary process to make good laws to reflect the aspirations of Aboriginal peoples. I thought that by going into the parliament, it would send a message to young Aboriginal people and to other Aboriginal people that participating in that space is, is should not be barred to us. We should be able to walk into the parliament or walk into a, a party, sign up, get a pre-selected, go through that process and go into, uh, into the domain of the that, that occupies parliament. Mm. And, and that should be just as much par for the course as anything else we do in this society. And I thought, well, being one of the older people, as it were, that if I could do that, with the travel I have to put up with, uh, with, the, with the inanities that you have to deal with in the parliament, but also the possibilities that you get with it, hopefully that'll give some in encouragement to younger people that parliament is a worthwhile place. It's not a place that, uh, you win all the time, but it's a place where you can have some influence and help create better laws and get better understanding to these major issues like treaty making and better policy positions. Yeah. Over the past 60 years, uh, Indigenous state relations in Australia have, in some respects, changed quite radically. In other respects, remain the same. Uh, I want to finish by asking you what you think we can expect over the next 30 years. Well, I'd hope that we have a successful referendum, whatever that's going to be. I'd hope that we develop as a nation a sense of the value of whom the Indigenous peoples are, not just the recognition, but a valuing of whom we are and the contribution we can make and have made to this nation. And that there's a recognition also that we are prepared to negotiate the way forward through agreement making and that we are prepared to deal with those matters that we see uh, that constantly lead to the social uh, disadvantaged positions that we have. So not only resolve those, but resolve these other more serious uh, matters that uh, really are still a blight on our nationhood. Senator, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks very much.